Well, I first heard Eddie's music when I was I was very very young. I was about five or or six years old, and um, I'd already heard Elvis's music. Loved Elvis, and uh, I mean Elvis was still alive then, so uh, he was still a, a, a big pop star, and uh, you'd read about him in the newspapers and so on, and and. Um, I was flicking through my mum and dad's record collection and I came across this album called Singing To My Baby. Now the front cover of the album is, is um, it's like two head sh headshots of Eddie and in the middle, from sort of here up, uh, he's sitting on a couch and he's just got this beautiful 6120, one of these. And I have to say I fell in love with the guitar first and then um, put the, 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 the record on and it was a very, it's a very atmospheric album cover. If you ever see it, it's, it's, it's very mean and moody and very shadowy. And um, when you put the, the, the record on, the first track is um, uh, sitting in the balcony. And of course, that's very echoey and everything. And um, there's this tremendous guitar break in it. And, uh, and the whole album kind of suits the mood that the album cover sets for you. And it's one of those rare albums where the the image and the music kind of matches absolutely perfectly and I know it's not classic Cochrane by any stretch of the imaginations but it's my favorite album it's my favorite period of his work because you really get to hear his guitar playing and the the experiments he was he was doing with the guitar um, for, for example he would detune he would have the the two uh, e strings down to a D and then tune accordingly. So he got this really deep growly sound that very few guitar players were, were, were getting back then. And of course he could bend the strings a lot more, but um, his guitar playing was very rhythmic. It was very aggressive. Uh, he wasn't as, um, uh, say, comparing him to say someone like Cliff Gallup, who was sort of single string stuff, very clever, very jazzy. Um, Cochran could do that, but he, he seemed to sort of realize quite early on that as far as rock and roll was concerned, people wanted something to sing along with. They wanted a beat, they wanted catchy lyrics. They didn't really want to be blinded by brilliant guitar solos. That was not terribly important. So therefore, he kind of minimised his own guitar playing um, on his own records. But then when he played for other people, he just seemed to be a totally different player, you know. Um, so he was really into into the, uh, the, the the guitar. He obviously loved this particular guitar in particular because he stayed with it throughout his, his entire career. Um, and he would use capos and change the pickup and and he kept the big speed, the, the fixed arm here with so, when so many other guitar players got rid of them. Um, and uh, it's it's been a, I mean I've been listening to his music now for. 35 years, I've never got bored with it, and uh, I think he's, he's terrific. <clears throat> well, here's, here's a couple of examples of the sort of solos that Cochrane was doing around about the period that he did the, the Singing To My Baby album. And um, the reason why I'll show these is because they're, 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 they're quite similar, they're quite easy solo, they're very easy solos to learn, actually. And they're, they're very rhythmical. And um, uh, so you've got, there's your E chord. Now another E is down here on your, on your D shape, on the fourth fret. So we're only playing those two strings there. And this is how the, the solo will go. To that. That's just an example of kind of like the, the double string stuff he was doing. Now if we listen to, uh, if we listen to another solo of his, he does something uh, a lot more rhythmical. Let's, and it goes something like this. And that's just playing an A chord. I play it like that, I don't play it properly, but. And then you just, with your little finger, you just press down on the three strings on the fifth fret. Keeping that A open. And that gives a really big sound. So they were the sort of solos that, that Cochrane was doing around about that time. 
And, and as I say, in the middle of a, of a rockabilly track, when something like that blasts out, it just gets the old hairs on the back of the neck standing up. This is a, a really interesting guitar, and it's great to see him being honoured in this way. Um, for so many years, players around the world have, have bought one of these and then put a P90 on or try to track down a, uh, an original anodized fixed arm Bigsby just to make it absolutely bang on. Uh, exactly the same as Cochrane's. Um, of course, nowadays it's a lot easier with the DSWs and the and the reissues that you can buy because um, you know they're relatively uh, cheap um, and and it's a lot easier to get the parts and uh, and the the uh, even the fixed arms now you can pick them up on eBay for you know twenty thirty dollars or something like that. Um, I think it's it's great that he's honoured in this way. Um, it's long overdue and. Uh, um, and it's interesting playing this. I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate. I've played Eddie's guitar on a couple of occasions back in the in the early nineties. Um, and what I really remember about it more than anything was that because it had been sitting in a glass case for forty years, it had kind of it really faded. Um, also, it still had the original strings on it from the uh, from the last time he played it. So of course you don't you know, you really didn't want to tune it up in case you broke one of them, you know. So um, I, I tuned it up so it was sort of playable, and I had a little plonk about on it. And um, obviously I was expecting the clouds to part and some sort of heavenly voice to sort of uh, bestow some greatness upon me, and it didn't quite happen. But uh, and also uh, I found his uh, his uh, last Fender basman, which was under the uh, in a cupboard under the stairs, and so I dragged that out and plugged it in through there and. Uh, and it did have the sound, and it and it and it was, you know, a, a, a piece of magic. Having idolised him for so many years, to end up actually playing, playing his guitar was was really quite something. And when I look at this, I mean, it's so accurate. I mean, it is absolutely unbelievable. It's scary, really. I mean, it's a bit heavier than than than, than I remember Eddie's to to, to be, but um, even down to the details of when Eddie put the P90 on, he he obviously never cut the. Uh, the uh, the pit guard there to to, to accommodate the, the the size because the P90 is a little bit wider than the diamond here so he just simply bent the uh, the bracket out and just plonked the 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 uh, the pit guard on top of it it doesn't seem to get in the way um, it certainly doesn't when you play and uh, obviously the P90 really helps it brings out the sound a lot more he was obviously he was a, a big jazz fan I'm very into his jazz playing, so of course with, with the P90 on there he can get all those big rich chords. And doing all of those sort of things, he was big into his sort of jazz chords at the ends of his song. Doing things like that. So, um, you know, it comes in very handy for that. And uh, I just think it's a work of art really. Certainly worth every penny if you're a huge Cochrane fan or a, 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 a guitar collector in general. I mean, it's just an absolute work of art. And uh, I think it's a beautiful guitar, absolutely stunning. <laughs>